Welcome back to the Soul Collective Podcast. I am so excited to introduce today's guest, Marguerite Regaloso. I heard, first heard Marguerite on the Portal to Ascension podcast, and I think it was about five minutes into listening to you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to reach out to her. I am so you know, excited to connect and further explore. You're bringing through so much incredible wisdom. Marguerite is the founder of the Seven Sisters Mystery School. She's a teacher and mentor, and she's the author of the Mystery Tradition of Miraculous Conception. Marguerite, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's really great to be here, Emily. Yes. I'd love to just start by, you know, hearing more about your journey and what led you to, you know, really embark upon the work that you are exploring in the world today. Yeah, you know, I mean, various people have asked me that and I, I kind of give it a little bit of a different thing each time. <laughs> so let's tune in to, you know, how and where did I begin my journey? I mean, honestly, I just think that I've been some kind of soul cosmonaut for eons <laughs> and lifetimes. And, you know, in this particular lifetime, the journey began from the moment of conception, I think, because I was always a very, you know, inquisitive child. And I, you know, I, I veered toward the mystical, you know, even in Catholic church. I mean, I always tried to like, really go deeper with and, and find some kind of mystical meaning, right? And then I had an initiation when I was 10 years old into the otherworldly realms with the passing of my mother. She had been ill and she crossed over. And that really was, you know, a big initiation and trauma that led to, you know, other dif childhood difficulties and things like that. And so it's like, I, I had to dig out from that. And so by the time I was in my 30s, you know, I, I really wanted to um, find out, you know, what is the root of human suffering? How can I heal? How can other people heal? What is the mystery all about related to this? Where did my mother actually go, right? All of those types of things. And I always wanted to help others. I always had that um, you know, I knew that my career was going to be something in assisting other people with their healing. And so I just sort of jumped into various things along the way. I mean, doing a lot of self-help, studying psychology in college, thinking that I was going to go into, um, you know, a, a psychological training, but I didn't. I decided to really throw myself into the acting world. That's something I don't talk about a lot. And I tried that out in my early 20s into, into my early 30s. And, you know, that was also about accessing the mystery. It was, it was about um, getting in touch with my deepest emotions and being sort of a medium for, for different types of characters and, and different emotional states and things like that. So, you know, that's something I really don't talk about, Emily, very much, um, but I, I left that behind when I, when I launched into my studies around the sacred feminine and the goddess. And I had gone to a workshop that was about women and self-esteem. And the workshop leader, the therapist there said that in order to know why your self-esteem is wounded, you need to understand that uh, in our you know, basically most of our world, the divine feminine has been cut off and that's led to what she called a narcissistic wound. So we are not able to see ourselves reflected as women. And there's always a problem. There's always something missing because of that on top of, or perhaps underneath all the other layers of trauma that we experience, many of us. So that started me on a road to exploring the goddess first through books, then through um, experiences and experiential program. And then that led me to really want to have my, whatever my profession was going to be focused in sacred feminine studies. So I went to the California Institute of Integral Studies in California 
And I lived in California for about 20 years, started writing extensively and teaching about the sacred feminine. And then in 2012, I um, was led to a resource that helped me weave together everything that I had been and everything that I had done into my seven sisters mystery school. And I really started going, you know, I mean, I had already been going native, so to speak, and then I was doing sacred medicine journeys and a lot of ritual and prayer and all that. But that's when I really moved from academic teacher into mystery school guide. And for that, I had to continue to open my own channels. I opened my psychic abilities um, and so forth. So that's like a brief little synopsis with some added extras that I have not talked about elsewhere. Mm, thank you so much for sharing with us. You know, the word weave comes to mind because you are truly weaving so much sacred wisdom together in such a beautiful way. Oh, and you. yeah, I'd love to start, you know, with the sacred feminine. You mentioned, you know, when there is a repression of that, that, you know, there, there is sort of this narcissistic um, identity of not truly being able to see oneself. Yes. And I just would love to explore that a little bit deeper. Like when we talk about the wounded feminine or the wounded masculine, how might that present itself? I mean, in so many ways. First of all, it presents itself in our mythology, which really are is a history of, of the interdimensional stories that have gone on. We already start hearing about the diminishment of the feminine. Look at any of the traditions and um, especially like the Greek tradition, but really even all around the world, even in traditions that have a strong goddess culture, like in India, you you hear about, you know, like the diminishment of the feminine. Even in those stories, you hear about the rape, the, the out and out rape of these goddesses, um, the deception of them, you see how they become, they become distorted in their personalities and so forth. So that's a layer that's kind of underneath everything. And, you know, on the human level, I mean, really what this goes back to is what I think is a hidden history about the planet that's being unveiled or several hidden histories that are being unveiled about what has really gone on who have the visitors been to this planet and what have they done and where is humanity in that pecking order? Because there's a lot that is being revealed that, you know, humans are sort of hybrided beings that were created by other interdimensional beings that were also interfered with and tampered with. And that our own very history where we were intended to be divine representations of, you know, essentially the angelic realms kind of embodied in a kind of matter, we got interrupted by other non-friendly forces who started all sorts of things from hybriding our DNA to um, you know, creating cataclysms and traumas on the planet. And I believe that one of the things that they did, one of the primary things they did was they threw a wrench between male and female relationships. And they really had to diminish the sacred feminine because I think that these beings uh, were more, more male valenced. So they came to the planet and they victimized both males and females of the species. And they ended up diminishing the feminine, raping it, um, you know, going along with what they were doing to the sacred feminine on the astral plane and kind of giving a sort of a privilege to males, human males, and this distorted everyone. So what happens when distortions go on? You've got problem, emotional problems that lead to problems in child rearing, that lead to epigenetic transmission of issues, that lead to multi-generational traumas, and that lead to many, many other things, all while these beings are continuing to operate in the unseen realms, but to victimize humanity with things like massive planetary sexual trauma and abuse, okay? Um, mind control programs, the hiding of what they are even doing by hiding these histories and inserting false histories into all of our establishments, mainstream religion, mainstream academia, mainstream science, et cetera. 
So this is like the backstory or the understory of what I think is going on. And the decimation and desecration of the sacred feminine writ large and on the human plane is something that absolutely is starting to be rectified and reconciled. And so that the goddess can become healthy again out of her distortions and humans can, we can, the masculine can as well. And we can once more come together in sacred marriage and partnership for the betterment and the restoration of what I would call, you know, new Eden, new earth and so forth. I think that's the trajectory that we're on. Wow. Powerful share. You know, I got goosebumps as you were talking because I think, you know, on some level, if we don't know all of the history, there is something in what you are sharing that deeply resonates, that we can say, yes, this is truth. I feel it in my body. Yeah. And it's important to, to realize just how complex this is, how much of a, of a process and evolution it's been. And I do agree with you. We're in such a turning point of, you know, making change and 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 you know if you just look at the systems and structures that we have it's it's apparent that there is um an out of integrity an out of balance that yes. has occurred whether it's you know our 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 leadership um our you know educational you know structures and systems our corporate structures and systems as the energy is out of balance. And I feel like right now, you know, what we're doing collectively is really helping in that shift. That's right. And the latest stunt over the past few years that these forces working through human minions, some of whom are in agreement and get benefit out of it, some of whom do not know what they're participating in, this latest stunt of a so-called um, mother nature inspired sickness um, and a so-called pharmaceutical remedy is really the deer in the headlights version. Like if you cannot see this, it is recommended that you start looking at this at deeper levels to understand what is really going on, what has caused that, what is encouraging it to continue, what are the, all the ramifications? What's the purpose? Where this might be going? You know, because this is like you know a major, a major battle cry. Mm. And when you get an entire planet, an entire planet, to focus on one thing and go under one lockdown, mm -hmm. that is a major magical supernatural feat that is not being orchestrated by, by three-dimensional human forces. Absolutely. There's okay. masterful manipulation. That's it's masterful manipulation because it has succeeded in dividing also humanity into those who understand what's going on and those who do not and are completely taken in by the propaganda. And then you have the division of marriages over this, families over this, communities, right? It's, it's all along the lines, this split. And so, you know, those of us who see it in this interdimensional way, all we can do is keep on keeping on with what we're doing and our own internal remedies of healing, because it's clear that no amount of speaking about it, blowing the whistle is going to get those who have already been taken in to awaken, okay? It's really about whether people are on that edge, know something's wrong and are looking for what is the explanation and then they pop open. But those who are already strongly taken in by these narratives, it may not happen. It may not happen for them in this lifetime or it may happen at some kind of later date when there's some sort of disclosure or whatever. So, you know, we are in a pretty intensive cataclysmic global time. And, you know, the astral forces that are looking at, oh my gosh, this whole entire planet went under this, this you, you know, this hoodwink, this deception. I mean, they're, they're just trying to do whatever they can 
to nudge us on the inner planes to, to oh, stay awake and do yes. the work that we need to do. Yes. Yes. You know, and I, I feel it is, you know, divinely orchestrated everybody in their own timing of right. coming into awareness and, and shifts are happening. You know, I am seeing it. I am sure you are as well on a, on a quick and rapid way, but everybody has their own pace and their own process. But, you know, I want to go back to something that you said in the very beginning, which was, you know, somewhat of an outside manipulation in the very beginning to separate, you know, men and women. Men and women. That was the primary thing they needed to do. Separate the masculine and the feminine, then separate humans from nature, then separate um, out and distort and destroy the indigenous wisdom carriers, be they individuals or cultures. Yes. All right. Those are like the three major strategies that have been going on. And it's just so interesting that I'm going down this road with you. I don't know why, because I have not, it has not been the focus um, of other, of other interviews at all. I have mainly been focusing on my work with mother Mary with divine birth, with the awakening of the um, Avalon energy with Guinevere, Arthur, and what the medicine that they carry, and all of the sacred masculine feminine codes that are getting reactivated and healed through, through those groupings. So um, I don't know, for some reason, I guess today, I just felt like <laughs> Yes. And I think it's a powerful reminder. And I think as all these codes are coming in and we're awakening to this ancient wisdom and, you know, the way sharers are sharing in, in such a potent and powerful way, it's just that, you know, understanding the, the ways that we can get off track or get distracted. And I think, you know, that, that red flag of separation, whether it's, you know, a, 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 you know, something that happens whether it's a pandemic or, or whatever the, the, the case may be, if, if there is that separation, um, attuning to it as, you know, something bigger that's happening to be Absolutely. aware. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd love to move from there to really, you know, we can see, right. And, and clearly, and you're sharing, it's like, we can see all the ways that this, this out of balance, this out of harmony is, you know, showing itself in, in society and, and really, you know, what are some of the feminine mysteries that um, can help us come into a greater sense of harmony? Yeah. Well, I would say one of the main things concerns what, what has been called the Holy womb chakra. First of all, the awakening to the concept that there is a separate chakra or a related chakra that is in the abdomen of women um, that men have the fragrance of through an energetic point in their bodies as well. Uh, and the resurrection of the knowledge of what this is and what we need to do with this holy womb chakra on the level of practices in order to clear it, cleanse it, and re-empower it. So that's a major uh, activity, I think, that, that is needing to be happening on the planet. I know that various people are doing it in their own way. One of the series of teachings that I learned is from um, the ancient palm leaf manuscripts, primarily of India, but beyond, that were brought together and studied and digested essentially by a, a holy Hindu saint named Sri Kaleshwar, who had a short 36 year life on this planet, took his Samadhi in 2012. But before that, he made available these holy womb chakra teachings through um, the lineage holder now is the Divine Mother Center in Laytonville, California. And he also has an ashram in Penaconda, India. So these teachings have been going out slowly and some of us are getting certified in this method. And what this is, is a mantra or a sacred prayer song type um, energy, a mantra and yantra practice, yantras being the, the dr sacred drawings that he found in these ancient palm leaf manuscripts that he says were brought to us basically by the Saptarishis, the seven wise rishis of the world. and um, 
that you know these are downloads really directly from mother divine mm. and they have they kind of went undercover during this whole long period of thousands of years of subterfuge and trouble and now in this post 2012 time you know they've really been emerging again and i have found that to be a very strong series of practices that is going to shift things because it not only shifts your own womb, but you're sending an energy backward in time to your mother line and all of your mother lines and forward in time to your progeny and you know the ones who are coming afterward. And really, I think this is going all the way back to you know some of these sacred feminine masters that we have called goddesses and so forth who were uh, tampered with and, and all that. So we are resurrecting and clearing this womb um, re-empowering it because it's it's a place and it's an energy portal for not only the bringing forth of children but the bringing forth of higher level divine children for um doing healing in the world mm -hmm. you know affecting things on the magical plane and so forth so that's a really, really important one. And I do teach that I have like a this package program where it's part of a program where people learn about also divine birth and the history mm -hmm. of divine birth as a real priestess practice and Mother Mary as a holy womb practitioner and a divine birth priestess. So there are several courses. And then I have a mentoring program that goes along with that, that, you know, as of this, um, broadcast is going to be going on in July 2022, 2022, on into the future indefinitely so that people can, you know, okay, so what do I do with that? All right, well, here's a way that they can get that kind of training and guidance from me. And, you know, there are others in the world who are doing this as well. So I would say, you know, the reclamation of the holy womb and the true understanding of what it is, is major because the womb in the body is just a replica of the universal womb. Yeah. And that's one major thing that we need to realize that great universe is a womb. It in, in, in certain Gnostic senses, it's known as Sophia who was called, you know, who's or womb. And so we are getting an understanding that as women walking around the planet, we are replicas of that holy womb. And this is why in India, the yoni, you know, the vulva and all would have been honored and worshiped really. So I think that coming into reclamation of that is going to be a major action that is going to correspond with then some writing of the balance between the masculine and the feminine, and then the restoration of the sacred marriage template on the planet. Yeah. Yes, I think this is so important for listeners to really feel into and explore just how powerful the womb chakra is and this healing work. You know, what has been coming through recently for me is just the power of the womb center to alchemize. Yes. And you look at that on a, you know, macro level, you know, universal, and then Gaia's womb center and then on a on a micro level it's just the ultimate form of creativity it is it is and we've got to get ourselves back to that garden really mm -hmm. you know something that i've been studying recently is the connection between the womb energy center and the heart yes yes and i love i know that in your book you talk a little bit about the um, connection with the womb to the third eye. So I'd love to explore some of those connections and how we can really expand into them. Yeah, well, Sri Kaleshwar said that the womb is really nothing but prema, which is love, which is also the heart chakra. So it's like the heart chakra is in the womb in a way. And then if you will, the womb is in the heart chakra. It's almost like, you know, every chakra is in each of the other chakras. Yes. It's just that each chakra might have a starring energy, right? A, a major energy that, that might 
be the personality of that chakra, but each one contains the others. But that connection between the womb and the third eye is really important because in the body of the woman, those are the places where um, divine energy comes in, in the form of a soul, a human being, and or in the form of a, an oracle, okay? And in the ancient world, those two were connected in that the oracle women were also divine birth priestesses. So they were receiving the God or, you know, the divine energy through these, these two portals. And sometimes it was resulting in prophecy. And sometimes it was resulting in the literal impregnation and anchoring in of a divine soul into their body and avatar. Wow. I feel like I'm having a third eye activation. And as, as I'm, you know, hearing you speak and share, it's, it's really, amazing. it's really potent information, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Sometimes when we hear these things, we, we awaken, we get activated. It's like truth. Oh, wow. Those are the codes that I guess I needed to have right at this moment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'd love to explore more because I know that you've done a tremendous amount of research around immaculate conception and mm -hmm. really how this originated and what it means and, you know, how that might also relate just to the process of bringing souls into the world. Yeah. I mean, all of this stuff goes together. You know, Emily, immaculate conception was something that the Catholic Church created as a term to refer actually to Mary's being born of her mother, Anne, without sin. Got it. So, it's okay. So that's immaculate conception in, in the Catholic doctrine. Virgin birth, it, usually we think of it equated with virgin birth. It isn't exactly, but here's how it is. Yes, Mary was born without quote unquote sin from her mother, Anne. Why? Because her mother, Anne, divinely conceived her. So Mary already came in an avatar. And when you come in an avatar, you have superseded like, um, you know, a lot of the karma and a lot of the issues that humans have, which is really what the sin is, it's karma and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So she came in a divine avatar from her mother. So in that sense, the Catholic church was right, immaculate conception. And her mother conceived her without sexual um, union with a man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, there was the absence of sex, but it gets distorted. Like when you look at that, what is what it really is, that's an incredible womb empowerment situation going on. <laughs> woman on woman, you know, priestessing, bringing in a major goddess into the planet. Then Mother Mary, divinely conceived as a virgin. Jesus. So that would be what I call divine birth or virgin birth. And in my book, The Mystery Tradition of Miraculous Conception, I go over the suppressed gospel called the Infancy Gospel of James, um, which gives the whole story of how Mary was born of her mother, how Mary was raised, how she was raised to be a priestess early on, how she then went into the temple and was raised by virgins and then how she conceived Jesus. So I go through an analysis of all of that. And what I weave in there are the various things that I've learned about divine birth as a practice in ancient Greece and the ancient Mediterranean world. I'm able to read that document by understanding what each word and symbol means and what each process is referring to and how it is part of a whole, if you will, even global divine birth practice that once took place on the planet and was carried out by lineages of women. And obviously there's a great deal of holy womb chakra, you know, information in all of that. And Sri Kaleshwar said that even Mother Mary um, was practicing the mantras that are part of the holy womb chakra system teachings and working with the yantras and that she may have even written some of the things that went into these ancient palm leaf manuscripts 
So there's a whole, once you start connecting the dots, you see there's this whole worldwide net of womb wisdom that was originally in service to keeping the vibration of the human form high, keeping the incarnates high, and then has been, you know, undercovered, um, covered over, dismissed, hidden, and so forth, broken apart. And now we're just starting to draw the lines to see the net and how remarkable this really is. Yes, absolutely. And one of the things that I love about your book is that you really share about the intentionality behind this process. And I feel like that part is so important for bringing a soul into the world. You know, there's this purification process that you speak of and, you know, really being in that vibration. And so I'd love if you could share a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, sorry, because I got a little distracted by, I, if you're hearing sounds, it's my lawn <laughs> person. And I'm thinking, I don't think I can give him a signal to stop. But um, anyway, um, can you just rephrase the question again? Yeah, just the intentionality yes, around, intentionality. you know, conception. Yes. Um, yes. So first of all, in the original days of our, our history, when pre-tampering, right? Maybe we would call it Lemuria, or maybe we would call it Eden. All conceptions were intentional. You wouldn't dream of having a sexual union that, or doing any kind of practice to result in a conception without thinking carefully and calling on divine powers to bring in the best possible soul for the planetary good. That has gone missing. And so the priestesses of divine birth were all the more intentional about what they were doing. They knew that their practice was designed to bring not only a high vibrational human, but an extra high vibrational being, what I'm calling an avatar, a living representation of the divine through their bodies onto the planet in order for this being to walk among us and give bigger teachings that we needed because as, as the world started, you know, as the history started unfolding, humanity was getting more and more degraded. And so periodically you even more needed this divine avatar to come in. And there have been various ones that have come in all over the planet. Jesus is not the only one. And so there was high level intentionality for, you know, on the part of those women. What I love about Sri Kaleshwar's work is it marries the divine birth teachings um, with the holy, with the holy priestessing of, of, of um, he, he marries the divine birth like priestesshood idea with the holy womb um, processes of regular sexual union. And he says that there's a, place in which a couple that is not necessarily practicing high tantra to bring in an avatar a couple can use a two mantra practice in order to conceive a higher vibrational child wow he does call this a divine child and that's one of the things that i teach you know that i offer people and that these couples are starting to use this mantra process so we absolutely must return back to the idea of conscious conception and when and how, what is the timing of our conception with the astrology? What, what, where are we accessing this soul? What soul are we in contract with that we're calling in? Is that the right soul after all for the planet at this time and so forth? It's a yeah. big, it's a big, uh, awakening that needs to happen for all women because we are the gardeners we are the ones who say yes and no to what plants come in and what plants go out yes and this is you know helping and making such a, a beautiful change i feel in 
the world is just that consciousness that is brought to all aspects, especially something as important and significant as bringing a soul into the world. And, you know, it's interesting just on a very practical level, you know, I'm in my late thirties and I would love to, you know, be a mother in this lifetime, you know, however that, that may look. And there's so many programs that are out there that are, you know, around age and right. around. Yeah. And so it's so helpful to really go beyond and really awaken to all the possibilities and, you know, I mean, it, it's just, there's so much more that is available than, you know, yeah. Work. Yeah. Because right now we're controlled by age and we're controlled by the moon. And mm -hmm. that's a realization that I've been coming to lately that the moon yeah. as a satellite was put there by unfriendly forces. It it, the manipulations of that caused the floods and they then took control over the woman's reproductive cycle because in the absence of artificial light, a woman will ovulate with the full moon and menstruate with the new moon. So now we're on a monthly cycle. The priestesses of divine birth, what I've started realizing is that because they end up with a very high level purified diet, they detach from the menstrual cycle. They're still fertile, but they detach. So therefore they can go with the star cycle and they can draw in um, you know, a being at will. And so this, I believe, you know, is part of the manipulation of the planet, which also includes the manipulation of the human body and the hormones and the aging process and so forth. I think that we've been made to have really short lives. We've been made to have hormones and be then governed in our sexual procreation by those forces rather than our higher self and so forth. So there's so much working with, you know, against us essentially. And these are things that, you know, I mean, I'm starting to consider and I know that other people are starting to consider like, you know, a lot of us have had this, um, this fondness for the moon, but it's like, I'm not so sure, you know, I've been hearing from these major oracles that there's a lot with that moon. And then when I realized, God, yeah, why are we just governed by this monthly cycle? What is going on with that? So again, it's another layer to consider. And I'm not saying that everybody has to like go with that thought form, but you know, try it on for size. Does it lead to other things that suddenly make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, without that, without that energy of the moon, how might we be able to conceive in a more conscious way? Yes. Yes, that's so true. It's, shocking. it's a shocking concept, but this is the level of shock that is upon us once we start taking the veils off the histories. There's so much to uncover and unravel. And I'd love if you could just share some really practical ways that we can start integrating and working with this wisdom on you know, a daily basis. What are some practices that you would recommend? Well, you know, I mean, quite simply um, adopting these mantras and what you, what you have to do with them is if you really want to incorporate this into your body and fully clear your womb and empower it, you have to go through a 101 day process of doing a series of like seven or eight or nine mantras. Okay. That is, is practical. It does take quite a bit of commitment. <laughs> um, Years ago, though, I gave a simpler process that I think is a good start, which is you close your eyes, you go in meditation, you ask Mother Earth to receive your grounding and you send from your whole abdomen a grounding trunk deep into the soil of the earth and you send a, a grounding line all the way up to the great central sun. And what you want to do is you want to start breathing in golden light from center of the earth and the, and the great central sun into your womb. 
feel it alchemizing and purifying energy out and then out breathing that golden light down and up back into outer space and into the earth where you're releasing anything in your body that doesn't serve okay so you're clearing and cleansing clearing and cleansing and then you're feeling your womb unite in a net with the wombs of all women on the planet and you are then sending heart hearted love and thought forms down from your heart into your womb into that grid okay so that's both a clearing for yourself and it's a benefit for others on the planet to receive love and levels of awakening and so forth so you know there's a there's a simple quick one and and that for people who want to do that i have on my website um if you go to seven sisters mystery school.com s-e-v-e-n seven sisters mystery school.com go to our store go to guided meditations it's called um the womb grid activation meditation awesome okay we'll definitely it lead to that it. yeah it leads you through it and i received that one in sacred medicine ceremony years ago so and the cult you know the cultivation of self-healing the healing from trauma the cultivation of self-love so that we can be present for ourselves and therefore present for others and in a loving and compassionate attitude toward others those are just as important along with any womb action that you're doing because it's you know it's all connected right so i've had many many processes where i bring people through the clearing of the heart the empowerment of the heart the activation of the sacred heart and i also have a monthly mother mary love and empowerment circle where every month i do a transmission with mother mary of a guided journey that she's te she's taking us on um, with one theme or another several of them have been the sacred heart and you know other levels of what we need for our own personal healing and then for our collective work in the world yes i love that so much i love that you just brought that through i feel like self-love is just we can't have enough of it and working with you know in mentorship with mother mary is such a powerful way to connect with that divine mother energy um and yes you know healing the mother wound if that is something that you know from past lineages or that you know you're working on presently that's such a powerful way to um to really work with those energies for sure i mean she is so available as a mentor i've been working with her personally as a mentor for years now and i call on her for my personal matters as well as to empower my priestess work and i call her in in private one-on-one -on -one sessions with people to receive information or or transmit energies to people she you know on the most primal level at night i will curl up in my bed and ask her to take me into her womb and i do that especially if i'm feeling anxious or freaked out or afraid or anything um, sometimes I ask her to just take me into her blue cloak, right? So those are also simple things to receive that divine mothering. And, <clears throat> you know, because sometimes it's not about just becoming Superman or Superwoman, but it's, it's really about getting that nourishment that we really didn't get in this lifetime and probably other lifetimes. That's a prerequisite for everything. Yes. And I feel like the womb just holds all emotions and allows for everything to arise. Um, it's just a, it's such a beautiful container to allow anything to express. Everything is welcome. Everything is okay. And to be able to really move through that and honor, honor all emotions and be held in such a nurturing way. Yeah. Yeah. It's so we all need remothering and refathering and or most of us anyway. And these masters are here to do that as well as to help us achieve our ascension or our incension because it's an inside job. Um, in other words, really restore ourselves to our original divine human blueprint. Yes. Yeah. And I'd love to just, you know, 
one thing that we talk about the sh on the show a lot is creativity. And I know that creativity is, is so connected to our womb center. Um, and so, you know, how do you see really this work changing the world and the structures and systems that are presently, um, you know, in the process of, of undergoing massive change? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, the womb is that creative cauldron. And I, I know that um, for me, it, that lesson came in strongly because I ended up having um, uterine fibroids and cysts and things like that because I was over pushing. It's almost like I was over creating without enough support and everything. But I was like, no, I got to do it now. This is my lifetime. You know, I did not have physical children, but I've, I've put out so much other material. Probably you have Emily and, you know, many other women who have um, not had children. You know, it's, there's, our creativity comes quite a bit from the womb as women. Um, and in terms of how this material can change the world, I think if you just do a thought experiment and sit down with what, you know, listen back to this recording and extrapolate what are the implications and ramifications of everything I've been saying and we've been saying. Hmm, what if all people did do that, what Marie is saying? What if all people did do that? You'll begin to see how this can change the world, right? You, you have to like, Think it forward, think it outward. Um, it's, it's tremendous. You know, there's, there's an incredible, there's an incredible um, utility to all of this. It, it really would change the world. Let's say overnight, all women started doing the Holy Womb Chakra mantras. Wow, wouldn't that be better than all people hoveling in fear in their homes without being able to go out for like a year. Mm. <laughs> what yeah. if we reverse that? And it's just like every single person was so deeply persuaded to do something that was going to be beneficial. How would we emerge after that quarantine? Absolutely. Yes. And you know, it, I love talking about this and I love how you brought up, you know, the fibroids and more of an external energy because I feel like, you know, we can see that in so many different ways and probably many of us can relate to that in some way, shape or form. And it's like, you know, when we are able to balance and, you know, and, and really receive more to go inward more to nurture. And that is like the sacred feminine. It, you know, we see that shift on an internal level, but then we see it on an external level as well, you know, it's, and magical. it's not even linear. It's not there, there are magical exponential things that start happening the minute you put a pebble in a pond it's like wow how come 75 million circles came out of that right it's yeah. the same thing when you start healing your own womb i mean when i started healing my own womb um the lockdown happened like two months later <laughs> and it was like a really weird synchronicity when i sent that to my teacher she's like yeah, um, there's something to that. There is, because I feel like, and people might be listening and they're thinking like, how do I do this on a practical level? You know, I know the, the mantras and, you know, there's other, but I, really on a, on a, and there isn't, I don't think a linear way or a one size no. fits all way. It's there's really- No one size fits all. Use your intuition. And maybe there are other teachers who are teaching about the womb. Find out what they're doing, take their classes take my class. It's called the Mastering Mary's Holy Womb Mysteries bundled package, you know, or right. I, I mean, go find something, start exploring or tune into your own inner guidance and see what, or ask mother Mary to come to you. What is she saying? This information is accessible. If we get a little quiet and start really paying attention and asking for the, for it to come through. Yes. Yes, 1000%. And I think, you know, one of the keys is to go inward and to allow that to emerge, you know. Um, so yeah, so, so beautifully said. And, you know, I just want to go a little bit deeper. I know that we're, you know, 
running towards the end of, of time. And um, this has been such an amazing conversation. And just, you know, one thing that I've heard you share about is just, you know, the, the emerging of, you know, 5D businesses and beyond. And, you know, that's something that I'm really passionate about because I don't like the word business. I feel like there's not a word to even describe what we, you know, came here to do and express and play and create. And it's so much more than, you know, that, that those structures and, and making an income and things like this. And I feel like as we are doing this work, you know, that's one of the things that I really, really see changing and evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 5D businesses. Um, you know, I actually think there are people, people who are far better at it than I, like Z Earth Star, XI is how she's supposed to name. You know, she's more of like an exemplar of, of a 5D business where you put out a really strong energy, you've got your skills and talents, and just something magical happens. Um, maybe you do a lot of free giveaway, I don't know, but there are these young people who are very high, high level talented. I think Elizabeth April is another one. They do automatically, let's, let's just say they, they've got a tremendous gift already. So um, they just put their little toe in the water and it's like 7 million people come and they're like, yes, I want to pay you a million dollars for what you're doing. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's still something I'm learning more about. Um, because I kind of always did it the good old fashioned way, which was like busting my butt <laughs> and, um, and yeah, just working hard. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you is the fairies and the leprechauns, those interdimensional beings that are our allies on the other side of the veil, they're all about ease and grace and abundance. They don't even have work in their vocabulary. And so I think that working with them, which is something, or, you know, let's say playing with them, cavorting with them, um, which is something that I've been doing more and more and more is the way to go with this. And especially the leprechauns. So, you know, in my, in my class on Guinevere and Arthur, um, we work with the, with the leprechauns mm -hmm. um, as real interdimensional beings who are all about, guess what? pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. What is that? That's fifth dimensional business manifestation, you know? <laughs> and so I think there are many, many ways of going about it um, that really has to do with imagination, visualization, play, way more rest and relaxation than you would think, trust, you know? But this is, this is a big area for me. Um, that I'm really still working on. I, I can't say that I'm the model for that, but I know there are others out there and I just say fabulous because I think that's the direction that we're going in more and more and that we need to, you know, as we restore magic on the planet, as we restore the holy womb grid, as we restore the power of our wombs and the right use of phallus, I mean, magic is afoot everywhere. M amazing things can happen in an instant. Absolutely. Yes, it is so exciting. I just, I love, you know, hearing you share about these topics. I mean, you just have so much and, and you're bringing, weaving so, so many um, beautiful teachings and new ideas and concepts together. You are such an incredible way sharer and hold so much wisdom, so many codes. So I just want to honor you. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your light. Wow. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a rough path. You know, it is, it is unfortunately not been easy, uh, but maybe that's what I needed. You know, really, I think we all, we all contract for what we need. Um, so yeah, um, it's been a humbling path. Let's, let's just put it that way. Wow. Well, that's so inspiring, I think, for, for myself and I'm sure all listeners, because, you know, you, you see you and all the things that you're all the beauty that you're bringing into the world. And, you know, it's true. It's like we all go on our own journey and it's all really divinely orchestrated. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your honoring. It's so nice to hear because, I mean, a lot of times you're, you're just toiling away in relative obscurity and 
um, it's nice to get the reflection back, right? I mean, we we need that that energy returned. So I really yeah. appreciate it. Yes. Oh, and Marguerite, can you share with listeners, we'll have this all in the show notes, but where they can go to find all of these offerings? Yes, seven sisters mystery school.com. And the seven is written out S E V E N. If you go there, it's chock full. There's a navigation bar with lots of drop down menus about courses, working one on one with me, my our free offerings, my blog, um, events that I'm doing, you know, a calendar. So just go in and be a kid in a candy store. There's, there's so much free stuff. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Marguerite, thank you so much. So much love to you and to everyone listening. Oh, thank you, Emily. Blessings to you on your path as well.